And if Savannah Marie has got even a shred of decency or ethics or morals about any of this, she'll delete the video. This is a post hoc rationalization to try and cover up the massive holes and gaps in your dog shit video. Breaking, breaking, breaking news. The video has just been privated. So following this response came what can only be described as the biggest cope fest I could possibly imagine. That wasn't what you said in your video, you f***ing lying bitch. Most of my claims have been verified. No, but no, this person is a disgusting human being. This is unbelievable. So basically, um, a couple of days ago, this person called Savannah Marie, who seems to be more like a tea channel more than anything else, released a video titled Pierogi, also known as Scammer Payback, exposed by former employee. Now, Pierogi or Scammer Payback is a scam baiting channel where they like bait scammers and then find out their location and try and shut them down and stuff like that. You know, they seem to be doing actually good substantive work to go against the scammers and whatnot, right? Now, I watched this video on stream and I okay, actually watched wonderful. a bit of my reaction. A base life, thank you for the 999, appreciate it. I give you money for our content. Not because Erpor and the tax man is coming to put you in jail with the rest of the mud beast. <laughs> also an extra five for working on her day off instead thank of you. parenting. Thank you. Appreciate Love that. That's you. very generous. Love you too. Thank you. So they're kind of like a tea channel. And, you know, I try, I probably, maybe, maybe, you know, it could be said I poisoned the well, I guess. I was just being sceptical. I didn't want to. But everything they were doing and saying just didn't add up. They had this weird video about Ashton Kutcher that gave me a bit of a red flag. And then as I started watching it, it just seemed to be, like, quite limited. But, you know, I was still open-minded and I was listening to wait to see what the evidence was. And then as I went, as I went through it, it became clear that it was absolutely dog shit. <laughs> like, that's all I could say about it. Um, initially, the claim was that this guy, uh, Pierogi, Pierogi, or what, Pierogi, is it Pierogi? Okay, whatever. The claim was he was a groomer of an adult. Okay. Um, he sexually harassed this woman and he was a sexual predator. And I thought, damn, this can have to have some pretty significant evidence for this to be proven. And then we got to the actual evidence and it was just like completely absurd. You know, this woman was clearly en engaging in a willing, flirtatious relationship with this guy to the point where she was engaged in like ERP, like role play and stuff. It was nuts. And the way it was presented was just like, what? You're trying to claim that this is like grooming, sexual predation, sexual harassment. Where's any of that? It's nowhere to be seen. It was a complete and utter joke of a video. And as I went through, I became subsequently more and more angry to the point that I was just like completely screaming about <laughs> You should watch my reaction if you haven't seen it, okay? It's like three and a half hours long. It's a big react. Um, you know, I, I think it's a good video. Anyway, <clears throat> so the, the video has come out and this Savannah Marie person has received so far a little bit of pushback, but not that substantive really, okay? But there's been people that have noticed and picked it up and have started to criticize her and criticize her approach and criticize the way that she went about the video, okay? And now she started to issue some like responses to some of these criticisms, right? Now, these criticisms, I've looked at a couple already, um, but I figured that we just kind of get them all collected in one video so we can kind of cut like a single response to all of these things that she's now saying about these criticisms that she's getting, right? But the criticisms that are being made, they're kind of, there's two parts to it really, okay? One portion of the criticism, which I don't really think is worth making and that's substantive, is to kind of claim that like, you know, oh, well, the messages are clearly fake or there's some other foul play involved, right? I don't really think that's the right way to go about it, even if that were true, which I don't think it is. Even if that were true, it doesn't really matter because there's nothing in the messages anyway, right? There's literally nothing, no misconduct in the messages anyway. So it doesn't matter whether they're real or fake. There's nothing to be concerned about that that's, that's significant anyway, right? Um, the only actual substantive claim that's been made that is, 
I think I would absolutely like agree with is that this guy, you know, very likely cheated on his wife. There is a statement from the wife, which we'll get to and we'll look at. But, you know, before we get to that, yeah, it seems pretty clear that this would this would be infidelity towards the wife. OK, now, at the end of the day, I don't really care about that in the context of an expose video. If I'm interested in the relationship dynamics of people or something, you know, that's fine. That's T, that's T channel stuff. Obviously, if you made a video that was like pierogi exposed for cheating on his wife or something, I personally don't really care that much about it. But if you make a video like that, that's up to you. The problem is, is you're wrapping that up amongst a lot of other very serious and in some cases, potentially criminal claims. And you're wrapping that up in it as if to lend validity, lend validity to it, right? And obviously, cheating on your wife isn't against the law. It's just obviously morally and ethically frowned upon, but it's not against the law. So that is more of a matter for him to decide between his wife and between the private parties, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like he's a really bad husband, okay, that cheats on his wife. Okay, make your, TV, make your TMZ video and be done with it, okay? That's fine if you want to expose someone cheating. I just think that that's got a certain genre that isn't really what I tend to to look at, right? Um, I'm more interested in like more substantive claims and there doesn't really seem to be any backup to these substantive claims that are being made. Because bear in mind, you know, and this gave me the kind of suspicion early on. Seven to me. But if, I go if by go the and, pseudonym. If you go and look at the video, I'll turn off the, the narration. Um, but, you know, this look, look at the tone of the original claim here. I'm reaching out to you in the hopes of exposing a sexual predator that threatens to use his authority and connections to cover up his sexual deviancy. I'm worried for my safety. Okay, so this is the level of claim that's being made originally in the video. And they also go on to claim grooming as well. A short time after working with him, it became clear that his intentions of our relationship were more than just professional, during which I was groomed by my boss and used as a sexual object, right? Also, the other thing I just want to clarify as well is this point here that was made, which I didn't really understand the context of until later in the video, but I just want to clarify another point too. This claim here of he used to get drunk and message me all the time, asking me to get high key drunk with him. Eventually, this led to him asking for videos and nudes and poses to reenact for his sexual fantasies, right? The way this is framed is insane. The high key drunk aspect was they developed a professional relationship, which developed into a friendship, and they set up another Discord channel, and they both willingly engaged and interacted in a friendly conversation, which took a sexual turn, right? So both parties were willingly engaging in this. This idea that he was like forcing her or the implication that he was doing something wrong in doing this is crazy because is it inadvisable to get into a workplace relationship? Sure, but not in terms of like an expose video or something like that, right? That's a personal matter. That's totally irrelevant, in my opinion, to like, you know, the broader issue here. Um, and also, if you go and look at the messages, and again, you can watch my full react if you want to see it. Her messages were extremely levacious. It was like crazy how sexualized her messages were whilst she was trying to describe herself as like pretending, not being into it and just playing along. It was very clear she was a willing participant based on the messages. And even if she's trying to claim now that she was pretending from his perspective, how was he supposed to know that, right? Um, but yeah, there's another thing that's going to come up later as well, which I just want to point out. Um, yeah, this here, these messages, these seem clingy and they could well be, but I think there may be more context here where perhaps she'd agreed to like talk to him at a certain time and she wasn't then available, which, you know, caused frustration. Again, not that big a deal. Um, but yeah, also this is going to come up in a bit when we look at the response from Hina. Okay. But I just want to make a note of this for later. I was getting paid dollars and not complying felt like it would jeopardize my job and source of income. This stemmed from the fact that he would usually pay my salary only after I complied. So this is a claim that payments only happened after she complied, right? The usually suggests that maybe it was times that he didn't, 
okay? Later on in the video, the times that she seems to be referring to seem to be some sort of role play dynamic where he is paying money and it's like, you know, she's taking on a more dominant role, like he's a bit of a pay piggy, like it seemed to be more of that dynamic at play, right? But also this is going to be important when we look at her response. So keep an eye of that, okay? Anyway, long story short, long story short, um, absolutely pathetic exposed video. If you want to make a video about tea drama, TMZ bullshit, go ahead. That's fine. Not a problem. But the idea that you're wrapping up this, uh, this, um, th this claim amongst claims of grooming with an adult, sexual harassment and sexual predation is despicable. And this is exactly the kind of like disgusting fake me too bullshit that I think has become more prevalent as time has gone on with this stuff, right? The reality of it is she willingly engaged in this in, in this entanglement, okay? Maybe she came to regret it afterwards because of how sexualized she was being. Maybe she wanted something more and he wasn't able to give it. I don't know. I can only speculate on the exact reasoning for it coming out. But this should never have been like a public matter. This should never have been anything. And if Savannah Marie has got even a shred of decency or ethics or morals about any of this, she'll delete the video and issue a profuse statement correcting the record on the situation, right? That would be the only thing I think that I would look at as being good out of this. Because the video as it stands is completely and utterly, it's a, it's a hit job, it's a hit piece, it's a hatchet job, it's a smear, it's a total smear against this guy. There's no evidence to back up any of the claims. And it, honestly, I, if you want to see my pure emotion, like reacting to this, you should watch the video because I absolutely lost it at multiple points. Anyway, <clears throat> she has been receiving some criticism, um, some smaller commentary channels have started to pick it up. And I know that bigger commentary channels are at least aware of it. So maybe we'll see some other, other content made about this. Okay. So far, it hasn't blown up too significantly. It got posted on the YouTube drama Reddit. It's only got 25,000 views. And this guy's got a big channel. So, you know, I don't know if it'll blow up further, but we'll see. Anyway, getting to the facts of the matter. So first of all, these were the first kind of statements she was making in response to some of these criticisms. And in fairness, some of the criticisms that were being made, I don't think were particularly smart because people were just immediately claiming that the messages were fake. And I don't believe the messages are fake. So Brandon is Pierogi's brother-in-law, and apparently, according to this message, he went into a voice chat and confirmed that the messages were real, okay? Right? Again, doesn't really matter whether they're real or fake because there's nothing in them. So I think pushing this, narr pushing this line of argument gives Savannah Marie an easy out to focus on the worst criticisms when she's responding, right? So if you're interested in offering criticisms on this, the best thing to do is, I think, to disregard anything in regards to the fake messages. The messages, to my understanding, are real. They did happen. This interaction did occur. These sexual interactions occurred. And, and that's that, really, right? So, yeah, that was kind of her first response. Now, once I think people started to take note that these were real, I think the tone of the criticism started to change and then she started to cope more. But at this point, you know, it is real. I'm curious, is this the kind of behavior? So look, th this is the thing, right? Okay, that's wonderful. But how hey, do I make money? Hey, booty, thanks pressing. for the 999. Just caught your video on this last night. Can't wait to see her attraction or her channel deletion for that insane video. Right, it's crazy, isn't it? Isn't it crazy? I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I'm not alone in my response of how crazy it is. So, you know, early on, she was holding on to these kind of messages of him, like, repeatedly messaging, right? Now, certainly, you could say this guy's clingy. That's the biggest crime here. But then, when you see some of the other messages in the video, it becomes, like, yes, he's blowing up her notifications. But there are times when she is agreeing to a HKD session, which is a high-key drunk session, which is where they interact with each other while drinking right? And 
she is saying, I'll be there for a high key drunk session at this time. And she see, and not only that, but she's like clearly a very willing participant in these, in these sessions. And then she doesn't turn up. And then he's obviously a bit miffed. So he's like, Hey, where are you? Right. Like, you know, when someone says they'll be there for something and they're not there, you know, you get a bit frustrated. And I think that if this is the worst that he's doing, which is blowing up her DMs, I mean, who cares? Like, that's not a crime. That's nowhere near bad enough. It would be bad if, say, she had said, no, I don't want this. I'm really against this. You're, you're freaking me out. And he was still doing this. At that point, sure, that's worthy of criticism. But she was a willing participant. The absolute worst you could maybe say about this is there's a clinginess or a sort of pushiness here. But again, when you see her messages, it becomes pretty clear that she was also a willing participant. And she seemed kind of flaky, which I think maybe led to this frustration, right? And this here, so people said, I think there were deleted messages. This, this Savannah Marie person is honestly, has got the IQ level. Oh God, I need to be. <laughs> That's not what ghosting is. Ghosting. Ghosting is when you're having an interaction with someone and then you stop messaging them and don't message them again. Right? This was in between them communicating and talking. Oh, hey, Nicholas. Chud is sweeping the serious allegations. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm not sweeping anything. I'm saying it how it is. So, you know, this is not what ghosting is. Yeah, ghosting isn't like not responding for a bit and then later sending him a picture of you inserting a vibrator, in, inserting a BP into your a-hole, okay? Bro, it is nuts the way this is being referred to. So anyway, the point is, is yeah, these aren't fake. These are very likely, these are, you know, 99% real. I don't think, and also it's been confirmed by relevant parties now. So, you know. Let's let's stop the cope. It is real, but there's nothing here that's substantive enough to make a significant claim of wrongdoing. Okay, so anyway, she just try. She focuses a lot on this narrative that the messages are fake, right? But then what you start to see is, you know, as as the criticism start to become more robust, as people recognise these are real messages, and the criticisms become more robust, the cope that this person displays is wild. Okay. Listen, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone fucks up. This is a pretty big fuck up. Like, you have potentially defamed someone, okay? Now, I don't know what the law says, but I would say that claiming someone is a groomer, a sexual harasser, and a sexual predator, and the evidence doesn't show that, but you say that it does, right? I would like to think <laughs> that that is, at the very least, spiritually defamation, if not legally defamation, right? Like, you're claiming something that isn't true about someone based on extremely flawed, motivated reason-based analysis of information. Right? But the cope this person starts to display, rather than just backing down, or even just saying, look, I've gotten a lot of criticism, let me take it away and just think about this and come back. You know, she just doubles down. And she's got it in her head that, no, there is wrongdoing here, and I just need to prove it to you. So the cope starts to ratchet up, okay? So the first thing you've got is this. If you're a paying member of Pierogi's YouTube, you're not allowed to speak your mind about the situation in the supporters chat anymore. You no longer have a place to speak your mind. This is controlling and weird. Please, all members of SP, please let's change the subject. And when an FP decides to add or fix a situation, he will in his time. As per administration, any and all texts about this will be deleted. Thank you. There's a good reason for that. It's because you can imagine... You know, and I've seen this play out myself before. When someone has allegations come out against them, the Discord can become just flooded with absolute insanity as everyone is looking to talk about it and there's no answers coming. So you just end up spinning around in a circle as everyone just is speculating endlessly. So it's totally reasonable that you would go, okay, hold on, wait till we got more information. Let's just chill out on these messages, which seems to be happening here, right? It becomes like super toxic very quickly. 
Like, there's nothing controlling and weird about it at all. Like, this is Savannah's thing. This is her biggest problem. Right, I was very mean when I reacted to the video. I won't deny that. But I'm going to try and be a bit more reasonable in this segment. Okay? She has got a conclusion in her head. And rather than being open to changing that conclusion based on new information coming in, she's working backwards to justify that conclusion every single term. That's why she's talking about this being controlling and weird, because she needs to try and find fault with every action that's being taken to further the narrative that she's got in her head, right? And then she's complaining that it's, a discussion is getting ruled out completely, right? And then the mod even responded. <laughs> Not controlling or weird, but calming the tone of the chat. I saw screen recordings of the entire chat. God. Okay. So anyway, just a little small thing to note there. She's monitoring the Discord of this guy. And she's like wagging her finger at the way that it's getting moderated. Okay. And she's claiming things that aren't really true about it, like it's controlling and weird to try and moderate a channel to make sure that there's not endless, insane discussion about a breaking topic where there's not much information from the other side. Anyway, it continues on, okay? It continues on. So again, you see here these signs where she's got this motivated reasoning, right? Three mods have officially left the Scammer Payback Discord server in the past couple of days. One was a huge financial supporter. I find this to be very telling. <laughs> Despite P's flying monkeys being relentlessly cruel, those who actually knew him are ending their support. Interesting. What it is telling of is that when a public figure has controversy swirling around them, Regardless of how innocent, guilty, or anything they are, some people just don't want to know, and they just want to leave. Right? There's, and that's totally fine. It, you know, no one is obligated to financially support someone for any reason. You can stop liking their content, and you can end financial support. Right? This doesn't prove anything beyond some people do not want to be close to people that have got controversy swirling around them, and that's fine. Like, I think that, you know, people should do more to stand by. The, you know, I personally think trying to stand by people as best you can is the preferable thing. But it's their decision at the end of the day. You know, what, what does she think this proves? Because the actions of, like, other people as they come to learn this could be flawed and could be faulty in how they're looking at it. What matters is what have you provided as evidence and information to back up and prove your claims? And she hasn't provided that. So now... She's desperately trying to grab on to whatever she can to back up her narrative. Well, the people that are supporting him are leaving. Doesn't that prove anything? No, it doesn't. She doesn't understand what she's doing. She's very bad at this. And she's got this thought in her head. And now everything has got to back up her conclusion, right? And in fact, if you watch her video, it's very clear that she's got the conclusion in her head when she's come to de deal with this story. And she's working backwards to justify everything that's her narrative, right? She's not come to this and gone, right, what are the facts and information and what can I reasonably conclude based on it? She's gone, oh my God, this guy is a groomer sexual predator. This is unbelievable. And then when she's looked at it, she's looked at information and gone, well, this shows it, this shows it, this shows it, and really scraped to find what she can to kind of prop up her narrative. And that's why... She's looking at those messages of him repeatedly like messaging her and atting her and she's using that to prop up her claims. It's because that of anything, even though it's dog shit and we can see that it doesn't prove it, is the absolute best thing that she's got to back up this idea that he had some misconduct. And that's why at the start of her video, that's the messages that she chose to show. Because those are the ones that she considers to okay, be like wonderful. the most damning. How do I okay. Make money off depressed people. Supply Kitty Lit became a member. Thank you for the membership, Nicholas. Why? Okay, that's wonderful. I mean, this is true. So how do I make money the reasonable reaction is not to speak Food to women on social media a without a mediator present. Very true. Not something you're going to have a problem with, though, okay, is it, really, wonderful. Nicholas? Let's be honest. But how do I make money off depressed? Thank people? you for the membership. So I appreciate it. Okay, that's wonderful. But how do I make money off depressed people? So, you know, like I say, this, this is only a small thing so far. There's more I'm going to show you. 
But to me, this really okay, clearly demonstrates this motivated reasoning that she's engaging in, Jesse right? R became a member. So any piece of information that she thinks backs up a narrative, she's latching onto and clasping okay, onto, okay? Any valid criticisms, disagreement, Jesse R became a or any information, sorry, I need to switch that off for a sec, or any information that goes against the narrative gets disregarded or it gets presented as like a negative. Oh, this is just flying monkeys, okay? Oh, these are people that just hate me and really like the other guy. Yeah, they're just doing it because they like this guy, right? That's not true. Some people are fans, right? Sure. I'm not a fan. I don't know this guy before I started covering this. It doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is the information that's been provided is absolute fucking dog shit. So this is like such a classic example of motivated reasoning from Savannah Marie. So moving on to the next thing, okay? She then posts these kind of statements. And this at this point, right, it's very clear to me what's happening with this. So she's recognizing that she's getting criticism. And rather than actually directly addressing the criticism, she's going, well, you don't understand. You just don't understand what the problem is. And I should have explained it better. But I know what the problem is. And if you know what the problem is, you'll understand, right? But the issue is, what she's pointing out is irrelevant to the analysis of the action. Because she did this whole post talking about how, about gender roles in Muslim countries, okay? And, you know, I'm not, if you want to read it, you know, obviously you can pause, you can pause here and read through the whole thing. But the entire, the entire message is, is totally irrelevant to the discussion at hand. Because even if, there is, I mean, it's you know probably true that there are certain gender roles and stereotypes and ways that people behave in these types of societies. It doesn't matter to the actions that are engaged in because even if this woman's actions were motivated and influenced by society, the actions don't really change the analysis of whether or not it's grooming, sexual misconduct or sexual harassment, right? So she could have been engaging in this like sexual role play because of the way that society has influenced her or something. Okay. But that doesn't matter from the perspective of looking at what he's done about it because she is very obviously openly and willingly engaging in these like sexual conversations and sexual interactions. So it doesn't matter what you could, what study you found to prove that, oh, well, look, um, actually, uh, the research paper here shows that I'm right, okay? So again, this is the sign of a total retard that doesn't understand what they're doing. They've got a conclusion, and what they've done is they've gone, rather than look at research papers or something and go, okay, so this research paper shows this, and that's how you guide your perspective, right? It's very fucking clear that she's gone, how can I prove to people that she's a poor woman and was getting abused by this guy? Oh, I found a study here that says something about gender roles in culturally Muslim countries. Bang, there we go. That's the proof. No, that's not how it works. That's not how this works, okay? You don't go and find a study to back up your pre-assumed conclusion and then use that to back up your claim, right? You're supposed to look at information and let it guide the conclusion that you then come to, right? So this is like, I don't know if there's a word for this, but where you are like trying to, it's, it was cherry picking. You're cherry picking. You're cherry picking a, a study that you feel backs up your claims to present to the audience because you feel that it bolsters your arguments. Yeah, confirmation bias. Yeah, it's like confirmation bias, right? Motivated reasoning, confirmation bus, all these things are coming into play with this person. And the thing is about it that's so interesting for me is it's like such an obvious case of these things. You know, she's so obviously explicitly engaging in all of these dynamics and these mistakes. I don't know. I, I thought she was from India. Yeah, that's the other point as well. I, I don't know. exactly. I thought this woman was from India, apparently. But this is about culturally Muslim countries. This study was done on 250 people living in countries like Hina. But she's from Pakistan, is she? Okay, well, I don't want to dwell on that too much because that doesn't really matter to me. The point is, this study does not back up the claims that she's making at all of grooming, sexual predation or anything, right? The only thing it might prove is that Hina was acting off the back of cultural influences, 
But that doesn't matter because she was a willing participant in the conversations anyway. And the claims that are being made are of sexual predation, grooming and sexual harassment, which still don't apply based on the evidence and information provided. You know, this there's a, there's a hint as well here of like bigotry of low expectations too, where it's like, oh, Hina's a poor woman. It's like, you know, we're, we're literally infantilizing this person. Where we're trying to act like this this woman is like so poor and desperate and like from backwards country that she can't possibly consent to anything. When it's like, no, she was a very willing participant at the time. She was very happy to engage and indulge in these kind of conversations. You don't get to post hoc post hoc reanalyze it. Oh, actually, no, I wasn't really consenting. I wasn't really into it. When the messages are so explicit and obvious that she was willingly indulging and engaging in these types of conversations. <clears throat> so let's just read this last point here. I've understood that this power dynamic between men and women exists in this part of the world for as long as I can remember. And it seems as though I made the mistake of assuming everyone else understood is it as well whilst I was making this video. This is total cope from her. This is complete and utter cope from this person, right? Her narrative is already starting to shatter and people are starting to call this out and criticize it, okay? And now she's doing this giga cope where she's like, well, I knew this when I was making the video and you're just too retarded to realize why this is actually rape. Okay, I'm trying to be calm. I'm trying to be calm, okay? I'm trying to be calm. Can, can we get some confirmation on where this person is from? Because if it's if it, if we could confirm that 100%, I mean, yeah, that is like even more devastating for a case. Where is this person? Hindu, Urdu, Punjabi translator. Yeah, look, at the end of the day, okay, listen, I think that this has got enough to criticize without that. If on top of that as well, she's used a study about a Muslim majority country when it's about India, that's an even, an even more stupid reason to bring it up. But nonetheless, regardless, putting that to one side, at the very least, this doesn't, this doesn't meaningfully back up the claims that are being made here whatsoever. It's insane to add like this study is backing up this narrative that she's this poor put upon, you know, poor person. You know, bear in mind as well in the messages, this person left and they said the reason they were leaving is they wanted a better paying job, you know? So clearly they've got the wherewithal to go and search for better income, but they don't have the wherewithal to indulge in a consensual sexual conversation with someone. That's so stupid. Anyway, let's continue. I didn't... um. And it seems as though I made a mistake of assuming everyone else understood as well when making the video. So I just didn't explain it the way it appears I should have. That's my mistake. No, no. This is a post hoc rationalization to try and cover up the massive holes and gaps in your dog shit video is what this is. Okay. But yeah, if you need a legitimate source that gives you some insight into why Hina may have behaved the way she did in these screenshots, I think this research paper will shed some light on that. Also, the other problem with this analysis too, she's acting like this is a dynamic that only exists in these countries, right? Okay. A boss having a sexual relationship with someone that works for them happens in the West as well. It's the oldest fucking trope in the book, right? It's in tons of movies even. It happens in real life, obviously. But it's a classic trope of society. You know, the secretary and the boss hook up. The boss, you know, the boss is married, right? The boss is married at home. The wife's at home. He has, a, he, he plays away with the secretary, secretary, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's a dynamic that exists over here too. And the sec, and the person, you know, although yeah, sure, there's a power dynamic and stuff, which is obviously repeatedly referred to, like it's frowned upon, but it's not anything significant beyond just the infidelity that is substantially wrong with that, right? Yeah, I had a relationship with my boss. Obviously, I'm sure it would be viewed differently because it's a woman and a man, you know. But anyway, we don't need to get into that. But anyway, yes, I have been through this as well. And I would recommend against it.
but it doesn't make it illegal or morally or ethically, significantly morally or ethically wrong. So anyway, um, if you need a legitimate source, it gives you insight. Okay. Yeah, stupid, stupid comment. Acting like this only happens because she's poor, like this happens in the West between two white people in America even, okay? I think the biggest problem here that I'm seeing from those pe so I'm seeing from those who are victim blaming is that none of these people are considering the cultural and socioeconomic differences between Hina and Pierogi. Definitely my fault for not profiling it properly in the video. Where is any of that demonstrated in the messages? Right? Where is any of that shown? This Hina person is clearly quite westernized, right? She speaks with a westernized accent. Yeah? So this claim that she's like, you know, some fucking, like, mountain woman from the heart of India that's never seen a fucking computer in their life is insane. She does fucking translation for fuck's sake. She clearly interacts with and engages with, like, Western sentiments and ideas and sources and culture. So this idea that she's, like, just come down from the mountains of India and is still doing Ayurvedic fucking medicine on themselves and has never, you know, it's insane. It's like this insane, it's like, it's like the, what is it, what is it called when you do this with, like, um, indigenous people in America? Where you act like, like the noble savage. It's that kind of element, right? Where you're acting like there's some sort of, you know, backwards, some sort of backwards retarded Indian that has never seen a computer before. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, all I've seen is people essentially saying, if it were me, I would just X, Y, Z. And most, if not all of these kinds of comments are coming from people in more privileged parts of the world. Oh, sorry. Do they not have fucking, do they not understand in India <laughs> that you can say, no, I don't want to do that. And the other person should go, no, okay, I won't do that. Geez, we are getting into the full blown racism here. Indians are culturally led to never say no to something they don't want to do. <laughs> I'll admit it's been extremely frustrating to see people completely disregard these key differences, but I didn't do a good enough job of getting that point across. I genuinely hope this helps. It's this assumption that Indian women, you know, have, you know, Obviously, yeah, there are problems in India, but you're broadening out to the entire population. And there are lots of people that are westernized and that have, you know, have, have got the, the idea that this proves that there was anything wrong is just absurd. There's nothing to it. This is a desperately grasping and coping, trying to find something to back up a narrative as it crumbles around her. OK. Now, on to the next bit of cope from this total fucking idiot. Disengaging from this platform for now. I'm remembering why I never started to use it in the first place other than the tweet about Big Brother. You're toxic as fuck. Have fun over here, I guess. So she's gone out into the public arena outside of the bubble of her YouTube comments and her audience. And the response that she's been getting is negative, to say the least. Okay. People have been extremely critical, okay, that's wonderful. harshly critical but how do I even. make money off depressed people? You can sweep all you like, Chud. He showed his true colors not taking her fake heart condition seriously. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. So, you know, also, what's more toxic? Is it people being, in some cases, excessively harsh to you on social media? Or is it dropping an hour-long video where you falsely claim that someone is a sexual predator, groomer, and sexual harasser? Like, what's the more toxic behavior there? God, these people are actually infuriating. Acting like they're acting out of good morals and principles when you've just released a video to totally nuke this guy from orbit with excessive, extreme, and in some cases embellished and false claims of sexual misconduct. <clears throat> And the only crime he's guilty of is cheating on his wife. Crime, I should say. E.g. Lately. Thank you. Enjoy, you join my content. Savannah replied to my video made about it. Check it out. Okay, I'll have a look.
So anyway, you know, it's it's this cope of like, oh, you're just toxic. You're toxic. And I've read through some of the comments. Are there some ones that are excessively harsh? Sure. But a lot of the comments that I've seen are like fair, substantive criticisms of her, which are like completely reasonable. Like it's completely reasonable to say like that you've made a mistake here. This is wrong. The messages don't show what you say that they show, right? Like, it's just crazy to me to act like everything that she's getting is some sort of like insane toxic attack when some of the stuff that she's getting is perfectly reasonable. Okay, that's wonderful. But how do I make money off depressed people? Danny Too Good became a member. You know, is this toxic? So someone's responding to the tweet that she made about this stupid study that she tried to share. Yep, it's still just as difficult to em emphasize because you showed us a sexting conversation between two people that were both consenting. What's toxic about that? I'm literally grasping at straws. Touch grass. Oh, that's a bit harsher, I guess. Pointing out inconsistencies. What does it have to do with anything? You're trying to grasp onto anything possible. It's hilarious. Oh, it's DJ Quad. Okay, okay. There's some racism. There's some. I did see a racist comment okay, there. I will wonderful. grant that. Okay. But how do I make money? <laughs> there was a racist people. comment. Okay. <laughs> so yes, of course, there's always going to be some toxic comments. But she's acting like all of it is toxic. Okay. She's at, <laughs> guys. I do not avow that. I disavow. Please do not leave racist comments. Okay. If you're going to be critical, I don't. You know, don't go crazy. If you want to issue a criticism, you're within your rights to do so. But just don't go crazy about it. Don't fucking dogpile and harass and shit. But at the end of the day, there's going to be some toxicity mixed in there. But what she seems to be doing is she's framing all of it as toxicity. She's coping with her responses about this, and then on top of that as well. Um, you know, she's latching on to anyone that's backing her up. Like she is literally s securing herself in an echo chamber and completely disregarding all legitimate criticism and dismissing it as toxic. When I think any reasonable person can look at this and see that she has done wrong here. This is a big mistake that she's made. And if she's got any fucking ethics or morals, she would delete the video and issue a retraction or release another video Rather than going, uh, you know, if you want to make a video, oh, he cheated on his wife, fair play. That's up to you. That's T-shit to me. But you cannot fucking release a video claiming someone is a groomer, sexual harasser, and sexual predator based on the information that you have. It's completely, it's, it's so fucking egregious. Anyway, Nicholas, you've been trolling in chat, annoying me all this time. i got good news. We're about to get to Barogi's wife's response, okay? So, we'll come back to Savannah in just a sec. But Pierogi's wife's response dropped, which we're going to look at now. So, this is um, Mrs. Pierogi's response to these claims and the video. After taking some time to process the information released regarding the inappropriate relationship between my husband and Hina, I've decided to share my thoughts. Bear in mind, this is his wife, okay? So when she says inappropriate relationship, that's obviously from her perspective. And yes, of course, it is an inappropriate relationship <laughs> from the wife's perspective, okay? I think cheating is bad. I think infidelity is bad, okay? Obviously, no one is perfect. And some people, I guess, never cheat, but, you know... I think everyone has had a time or moment in their life where they've been um, tempted to, if not indulged in some light cheating all the way through to full on, full on, like, you know, completely sleeping with someone or whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, this obviously is a reasonably substantive cheat, right? We're talking about the guy having private conversation, having private sexual conversations with another woman. Okay. Like, Come on, that is that is cheating. He's cheated on her, and that's fine to say, okay? So anyway, let's continue. The relationship between me between Pierogi and Hina was obviously inappropriate. That being said, it was a consensual emotional relationship fueled in part by Pierogi's abuse of alcohol. So that's another element that I think 
um, I kind of maybe dismissed is this alcohol aspect because I didn't really know what to make of that one way or another. But this seems to be an admission that this pierogi guy does have like an issue with alcohol, right? So not an excuse for the cheating or whatever, but I think, you know, there is an influence coming in that aspect, right? This is not an excuse for the poor decisions he made. It is an acknowledgement of a pattern of behavior I've witnessed over the last couple of years as his use of alcohol increased. Yeah, sure. I, do you know what? Do you know what? I think because I was so focused on the insanity of the allegations, I didn't really kind of like talk much about this when I was watching the video, but you're absolutely right. It is kind of crazy to like be guzzling shots over Discord with someone. Um, it, that's a weird thing to do. I think I think that also I could maybe interpret that as just blowing off steam on a Friday or Saturday night. Um, you know, some, something along those lines. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Listen, she calls it alcohol abuse, right? I call it having a good time. What's the difference, you know? I mean, yeah, I, I don't really drink that much. I've had like, not, I've never been an alcoholic, but I've definitely had excessive usage that goes beyond what would be considered just, I mean, we're big drinkers over here anyway, right? When you're younger, it's very common that you go every Friday and Saturday night, spend a hundred quid or 200 quid, get absolutely fucking sloshed, right? I don't do it anymore. But yeah, getting drunk on like a Discord server, I can see that that would be potentially like, especially if you're cheating at the time. It's, that is an issue. It's an issue. Okay. Anyway, that being said, still no evidence of like sexual harassment or anything like that, which she goes on to say, which we'll have a look here. I further acknowledge that his position as Hina's employer likely created an unbalanced dynamic in her mind. That's fair. However, I do not believe his actions were malicious or predatory. So what Miss Perigi is doing here is accepting that there is a power dynamic, but rejecting this idea that he was predatory or malicious, which I think is extremely reasonable. OK, and you will notice in the response how it how it plays out. Um, but yeah, note this point. So she is saying. I don't think he was malicious or predatory. I recognize there was a power indifference. Um, you know, his behavior was inadvisable and inappropriate because he was drunk and obviously, you know, it's cheating, etc. But she rejects all the claims of like malicious predatory behavior, right? So this response for me is, is kind of like just demonstrating, yes, exactly what we've been saying about this. This is cheating. Um, although there is a dynamic at play, it doesn't mean that there's anything malicious or predatory happening and there's no evidence that's been provided of that. And Pierogi's biggest crime is simply, you know, being in unfaithful to his wife, which he is going to get consequence for in some way, presumably, you know, at the very least public shame through to having to go, you know, he's going to get consequence, public shame, and he's probably going to have to stop drinking for a bit. OK, I mean, that fucking sucks for the guy. Anyway. I'm sure it's going to be very difficult on a personal level, and that's obviously a private affair for them to sort out. Anyway, let's continue. Rather, they both were short-sighted, reckless, and stupid. Pierogi understands the seriousness of the situation and assault treatment. Please allow him to work on himself and heal from his addictions without further speculation of his intentions. I don't want to minimise the hurt he's caused, but I do want people to consider that further speculation will not only be detrimental to Pierogi. Please take a moment and pause to think of the SP team, their families and the amazing work they do, as well as the deep pain and anguish this is causing me and our kids. Oh my God, bro. He's got kids as well. How old are they? Bro, that's crazy. My kids adore their father, our children need him, and I'll be supporting him as we begin our difficult journey forward. Please help us by respecting our privacy during this time. So yeah, I mean, look, this is a great response, okay? I don't really have, um, you know, like, yeah, I mean, I feel like this kind of, <laughs> I feel like this kind of validates. Oh! <gasps> 
Breaking news. Breaking news. Thank you for the super chat. Breaking, breaking, breaking news. The video has just been privated. The video has just gone private. Okay, that's wonderful. But how do I make money off depressed people? That's the link to the video. You see the thumbnail pop up. That's the link to the video. It's gone private. Yo, let's go. We're we gonna get another win. Are we gonna get an end, another end of the month win? Yep, it's been privated. It's been privated. Let's go. Well, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Let's wait and see what happens. I don't know what the future's going to... You know, maybe she'll make a statement about it. But I think the fact that it's privated is is good. I think that, you know... At the very least, it's not gonna it's not gonna spread further misinformation. But let's wait and see. But at the very least, the fact of the matter is, as we're speaking, at two oh nine GMT. Is it GMT or BST? I don't fuck. Anyway, <laughs> UK time. That's ten. That's approximately ten past nine a.m. Eastern. The video on the thirtieth uh, of January, twenty twenty four. The video has been privated. It's GMT, yeah, but it's BST as well. But British Standard Time, I think, is when it's the other thing. Anyway, GMT, and then it goes to BST when the clocks change, right? Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is, 9, 10 a.m. Eastern, approximately, just before that time, the video has been privated. So we'll see what happens next. Anyway, let's keep going because we've got the narrative to consider, okay? So anyway, this response makes it very clear to me from the wife that yes, this is cheating, which we all, I think we all knew that anyway. I think I said multiple times in the videos, worst crime is cheating. I think we all knew this was a cheating expose um, wrapped up with like false claims of sexual misconduct. But yes, the cheating aspect has been confirmed. Um, yeah, that's the wife's response. Now, obviously, knowing the video is taken down, maybe there's going to be new information that comes out. Or maybe it gets re-released. I don't know. But anyway, let's keep focused on the narrative. So following this response came what can only be described as the biggest cope fest I could possibly imagine from both of the parties involved, right? And these responses, it, it was like... It was acting like you hadn't called him a groomer, sexual predator, and sexual harasser. Acting like this response was actually, like, backing up what you're saying. When it didn't at all. They were disputing strongly the claims that you made in your video. You know, they say in this statement, right? I do not believe his actions were malicious or predatory. The relationship was inappropriate. It was, but, but it was consensual emotional relationship. Like, this is a complete refutation and rebuttal to the claims that you're making in your video. And then look how these, look how she frames it. Pierogi's wife has responded to reiterate what I said in the video. I genuinely hope that he can grow and come out at the other end of this as a better father, boss, and per husband, boss, and person. I'm quite relieved to see she's admitting to his faults. <laughs> what? She's admitting to like 25% of what you've claimed and rejecting the other 75%. Are you serious right now? It's just complete disgusting cope to act like you're being validated by this where you're actually being strongly disputed and refuted. <sighs> <clears throat> While also sticking by her husband's side while he seeks treatment, I hope this part is true. Marriage is through sickness and in health, and if she's willing to stick by her vows despite him breaking his, I support it and love to see it. Hopefully love wins here and everyone can move forward happily ever after. I don't know how old his kids are, but I hope they're young enough when they look back at their father during their childhood 
they have nothing but fond memories with him. And they don't remember these times where their dad is allegedly absent and drunk. That wasn't what you said in your video, you fucking lying bitch. That wasn't what you said. You claimed he was a groomer, sexual harasser and sexual predator. And now you're trying to act like, oh, well, yeah, I hope they don't remember when he was absent and drunk. That isn't what you claimed in your video. You said he was a groomer, sexual predator and sexual harasser. The copium of this is unreal. And she's acting like it was only ever about the cheating thing, when that was a fraction of what the video was about. And it was supposed to be about him being a groomer, sexual predator. And sexual harasser. And that's the other thing too. If she had released a video, right, this, per this person cheated on their wife, right, most people would maybe think, oh, that's scummy, fuck, you know, we shouldn't have done that. But you wouldn't get the same flavor of criticism because only a certain amount of people, mostly women, care about, the, 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 you know, someone cheating on their partner to that level where they need to have a big moral outrage about it, right? That's the thing. It's the moral outrage that's the issue with this. Because, and, and the only way you get the moral outrage is by claiming that there's sexual misconduct in this situation, like serious sexual misconduct. Right? Because if you release the video... Oh, wait. Hang on. More breaking news. Wait. Uh-oh. Bear in mind, this is happening live as we speak, okay? So you need to excuse me if things change. I just showed the thing. It was literally privated. Uh-oh, it's back up. The video is back up. Repeat, the video is back up. On the ground reporting, coming at you live from the Chud Logic News Network, our review center, the video is back up. It was privated for a short period of time, but now has been re-released. What is going on over at Savannah Marie, the Savannah Marie Center? It's a fluid situation, guys. It's a fluid situation. We got a fluid R review on our hands. Total disaster. The video gets taken down. Now it's back up again. We're still waiting to hear what's going on. On the ground reporting happening as we speak. I'm not sure if anyone can double check. Anyway, going back to this, going back to this, okay? Let's keep reading this statement. I showed you, you saw it happen live. It literally happened live. We saw it go down live and then it's back up again. I think this is a well-written response from Mrs. P and I hope it's coming from a place of honesty and not just saying what she thinks the internet wants to hear. Now the only statement we need to hear is pierogies, but they're asking for privacy at this time while he seeks treatment, so I can't imagine we'll be hearing a statement from him personally anytime soon. Hopefully whatever treatment he enters into will help him realise where he was wrong, take accountability for those things and mend whatever pieces are broken. But I'm content with this response given the fact that she's a victim herself and is probably saying certain things to pacify herself. What do you think? This is un this is weapons grade copium from Savannah Marie. Key premises of your video are being challenged in this statement, right? They are saying that they don't agree with the fundamental premise, which is that he engaged in mis sexual misconduct. She's saying that he was not, in her opinion, malicious or predatory. She's saying it was a consensual relationship. And now you're trying to act like, oh, this is actually a good response. Well, it's not. If, you, if your claim is that he's a sexual predator and she then says he's not a sexual predator, how is this a good response to satisfy your claims? It doesn't make any sense. She's just coping super hard and she's trying... Motivated reasoning. Picking the pieces of information that she can to back up the narrative that she's correct. She's acting like this response satisfies the claims that she's making. But it doesn't. She's refuting what you're claiming. The most substance in your video is that he's a sexual harasser, sexual predator, and a groomer, all refuted by the wife. And you're claiming like it's a good response. You're full of it. You're desperately clasping on to whatever piece of information you can to try and act like this isn't a total disaster 
and your narrative is falling apart at the seams. You can't stand the criticism because you know it's correct. You know deep down that you're wrong. You know deep down that you've made a mistake. It probably explains why the video just got privated, right? You're wrangling with this. You know that this is wrong. You know this is fucked up. Do the right thing. Take the video down, okay? Issue a statement. I should have just made this about him cheating. The sexual misconduct claims were not backed up by the evidence. This was about him cheating and I should have made a video saying that he was cheating and that's that. Okay, there we go. There's your answer, right? Obviously, you're still going to hurt because people are going to look down on you for having done this in the first place. But at the very least, you can salvage some credibility from this by doing the right thing, which is to take the video down, to correct the record and say the claims of sexual misconduct, clearly sexual predation, sexual harassment and grooming were not validated by the evidence. It was a consensual interaction. The issue with this was, is and always has been just the cheating. That is what the problem always was. That's what the problem was for you, but you wanted to wrap it up in a juicy little bow to make it seem more appealing. A disgraceful, disgusting act, okay, that's but nonetheless, but a, a big mistake that can still be rectified somewhat at least. Thank you for the super chat. Maybe she probably didn't edit it, maybe. Okay, that's wonderful. But how do I make money off depressed people? This is good, but it's no autistic smash essay quoting Hitler. True. Thank you for the super chat. And that, I think, is why, like, there's two parts to this, I think. She's coping because she wants to feel like she's correct and she's validated. But I think the other aspect is because this does satisfy her okay, because it addresses wonderful. the cheating. But how do I make money off depressed people? Do you think she took the video down to edit it? Thank you, Stockner. This is an original thought I had myself. Because if her concern is cheating and the wife is coming out saying, yeah, this was cheating, and she's like, well, that satisfies me, is that an indication that that's truly what she cared about as well? But yeah, notice how there's nothing in, in what Savannah Marie is saying here where she mentions or talks about the fact that the wife is refuting the most important key claims that she's making in a video, that he is a predator, groomer, sexual harasser. Now, let's move on to this person's response, Hina. One thing I wanted to show you here, okay, is I know, remember I said earlier about the pay thing and I pointed out in that statement about the pay. I don't know where that message came from. The claim is that that's an email that Savannah Marie received. So my understanding was this was Hina's words, but now Hina is making statements that contradict what that message is saying. Obviously, it was a Times New Roman font. Didn't seem to be an email form format. And I've got a suspicion that that could be a Mama Max-esque thing for the video, potentially. I don't know. But what's odd to me, either Hina is a completely inconsistent, incoherent person full of lies, or there's misrepresentations happening because Savannah Marie is putting a... Um, a sort of frictional spin on some aspects. Because how does this make sense? In that original statement, the very, very clear and strong implication was that Pierogi was withholding payment until she performed certain acts, acts for him, right? So the original statement that came out, she said the following. which, um, you know, gave a very strong indication of, like, some serious misconduct. Sorry. See, look, I'm from a third world country. I was getting paid in dollars and not complying. Felt like it would jeopardize my job and source of income. This stemmed from the fact that he would usually pay my salary only after I complied. So the implication here, propping up, 
this narrative that she was justly feeling concerned that she would jeopardize her job and source of income was this narrative that he would usually pay, he would usually pay after she complied with the requests. Another thing to point out is there were moments where she was talking about buying lubes and dildos, but we won't dwell on that. That's in the original reaction. So the implication to me there quite strongly <laughs> is that he is withholding pay from you in order to get you to perform acts, sex acts, he would then pay you, which made you feel like your job was jeopardized if you didn't comply. But then she's now said this. Speaking of the truth, one thing I see repeated constantly is that he withheld my pay. He never did. So, there's an, there's an issue here, isn't there? So is this an actual truthful representation of the email that Hina sent? And Hina is just completely inconsistent, incoherent, or perhaps even lying here in order to sound like it's juicier? Or is this a Mama, Mask, Mama Max-esque, oh, I've got an email here, but the email isn't actually an accurate representation of what the person has said? And I think that's something that needs to be answered to as well, you know, because this th this doesn't make sense. This is this is a complete inconsistency in the story, because people are saying repeatedly that he withheld pay because you allegedly said in the email that he did that. You know, here you're saying that I was getting paid dollars and not complying felt like it would jeopardize my job and source of income. This stemmed from the fact that you would usually pay my salary only after I complied. You're claiming in this statement that he would only that he would pay you only after you complied with the sexual requests. But here you're completely dismissing that sentiment. So which is it? Are you either a liar and totally inconsistent and incoherent? You know, you spun a web of lies so much, you're forgetting what you said previously. Or is this a narrative extrapolation that Savannah Marie has made? And if so, that's something that needs to be known. Because is this an actual email that she sent to you? And therefore we take it as a, you know, statement of her thoughts, feelings, and, and, and whatnot about it. Or have you created this as a narrative device? So another thing that I think needs to be answered to. And then we've also further to this is a further statement from Hina, which again is just utter, utter cope, utter cope. <clears throat> My final post addressing questions. At the end of the day, you do agree that Pierogi did something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if it's like, you know, this guy burnt dinner and then went out and murdered someone, okay? And you're like, no, they didn't murder someone. No, but they did burn the dinner. They did do something wrong. Yeah, there's a massive gulf between the severity of those actions. And cheating on your wife is not comparable to being a sexual predator, groomer, and sexual harasser. Are you serious? So they're trying to latch on to this idea that the wife said the cheating is bad to act like it's reasonable to make all of these other claims. Isn't this crazy? The, the cope that they're engaging in now to grasp on. If not everything, then at least some. This YouTuber burnt the dinner and murdered someone. Oh, but he didn't murder someone. Yeah, but he did something wrong, so the video is still fine, right? No! Then make a video about the cheating only. Don't bring in all the other nonsense that you cannot prove because it didn't likely happen. If it did happen, there's no evidence whatsoever that's been provided anywhere to show that. And again, go and look at the tone of her messages. Very clear. Very clear that she, you know, there's a couple of things that could be happening here, right? The most likely is probably that she feels guilty about being a home wrecker. And she wants to try and justify that by acting like she was she was kind of, you know, groomed into it or something, which is obviously retarded. Maybe that's the explanation for this. 
because you know those messages tell a tell a very specific story as to what she was doing. She was very much into what was happening. Anyway, there's a number of theories about why she's acting the way that she is. So I don't know if we'll ever get to the bottom of it. We can only speculate, really. Okay, let's continue. She's a scammer agent. Well, look, this th look addressing that point. He obviously does. He's in the business of taking down scammers. I just wouldn't want to go too far with that theory because I don't really have any any strong evidence to back it up beyond what she did before. You know, I think this is easily explained by the facts we've got in front of us. If more information comes out, obviously we can look at that. But I just want to kind of try and stick to what I think is more likely and easier to demonstrate. You know. But yeah, by all means, have your theories, okay? By all means, have your theories. That's cool. But I'm just saying, for me, I want to put my flag on the ground that is most stable, right? That's that's the thing. Anyway, I laid everything out transparently, and you can make of that what you will. Also, I wonder what Vrol Savannah had in guiding the presentation of this information. Obviously, she made the video. And... You know, you can tell there's even points in the interview where Hina seems to be kind of disagreeing with the, the hardline narrative questions. Like Savannah Marie gave the, the most despicable interview that it was softball. It was like leading. It was clearly just propping up her narrative. She didn't ask any hard or pressing questions of Hina about her behavior and her engagement in this. But anyway, you know, I wonder if this this video that's come out at the other end. Maybe she's maybe she's been uh, talked into certain things, perhaps, but I don't know. Either way, both of these people at the moment, I think I would I view very dimly. Let's put it that way. Anyway, let's continue. Um, <clears throat> if I hadn't made this public, this would have happened again. He could have done this with another employee, harassment or not. Okay, cool. Okay, someone could cheat on their wife a thousand times. And that still wouldn't be my concern. That doesn't matter to me, right? Do I think it's wrong to cheat? Yes. Do I think the person should not cheat and be faithful? Yes, obviously. But the idea that we need to bring this forward in order to stop happening again acts like there's like a significant substantive harm beyond just the wife, you know? And listen, I think it's good that the wife knows and it can be dealt with. I think that if you want to make a video... Um, calling out someone for cheating, that's fine. But then you know what you're getting and you're getting a very different tone to they're a sexual predator groomer and sexual harasser, you know? Um, so yeah, you've wrapped it up in, in dishonest allegations, lies essentially, in order to make the pill go down smoother as far as I can tell, right? So I don't think that the fact that you've exposed cheating and you've stopped another. You stopped the wife getting cheated on again. Is justification for releasing this video? It's justification for contacting the wife or failing that, putting out a video that clearly states that you're just concerned with the cheating and leaving it at that. Right. Anyway, to continue on. And those who believe me will believe me because what I've said is the truth. If you don't see it that way, it's valid. This is the internet, not the court of law. You're entitled to your opinion. Nothing negative came out of this. Fortunately, it seems like the impact that this is having is that Pierogi is going to seek some assistance and, you know, things are probably going to be okay. But you can't tell that for sure, right? And also, also, that's just talking about, like, the moving parts of Pierogi and what he's doing. What about, yeah, I was about to say, what about the kids? What about the kids looking at this? I don't know how old they are if they're engaging in the internet. Um... But but like there's got there's like you know but cheating stuff should be dealt with obviously with very soft silk gloves right I think it should be something that's dealt with privately amongst the family and you've put it out there even if you do want to expose it and put it out there I think there's an argument of the TMZ style this person's cheating fine but you've done it in a way where you've wrapped up all this other stuff around it too 
So you've just increased the chances of there being some negative consequence off the back of this. Like kid might be watching and thinking, oh, do, my dad's a, what, a groomer or something? If they're old enough, they might know what that means. And they might think terrible things about it. Like, you know, you're, you're just putting a fucking bomb of distress on this family for no good reason. With no good evidence. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's like a wrecking ball. You're, you're handling it like a fucking wrecking ball. That's a very good way, Matthew Walker, of putting it. Thank you in chat. Pierogi is seeking out for his alcoholism. If you support him, shouldn't you be happy? He's this is so this is such this person is such a manipulative piece of shit. If you support him, shouldn't you be happy? So this is seeking to diminish their role in this and the potential damage they've caused or could have caused in the reckless way that they've engaged in this. It's just cope. This is all cope to try and justify their way of doing this when it's very clearly obviously wrong how they've gone about all of this, right? Now, I put, you know, a substantial amount of the blame on Hina because she's the one that, that came forward in the first place, framing it in this way. But Savannah Marie also is massively culpable because she's the one that put this on a platform and broadcast this out to a wider audience. He's finally seeking help, something he most likely would not have done if I just messaged him. He tends to ignore topics he doesn't want to talk about. Either way, everyone is entitled to their opinion. Also, the audience is not owed st the stability of the creator, right? <laughs> like, if a creator is a raging alcoholic and is, you know, I'm not saying he is, he's probably just got a few issues with the old booze. But, like, what business is if the audience that they deserve to have him not be an alcoholic? Like, obviously being an alcoholic is bad, but that's for them, that's a private matter for them to deal with. What matters to you is like the content that you, you enjoy and you are maybe paying for. If the content is what you want, then that's all that should matter, you know? The booze makes the show better. What do you, does, does it? I don't know. I thought, and he's quite like particular and considered in how he has to do things. I'd have imagined someone turning up being fucking raging drunk, but he doesn't seem to do that. It's just his way of letting off steam, which may be excessive. Anyway, continuing on. Either way, everyone is entitled to their opinions. It's the internet. You're allowed to feel and express how you feel, and so am I, but at least be respectful about it. Don't be nasty, that's all. I hope you have a good day. God, it's so disgusting how people do this. They make these claims of sexual predation, harassment, and grooming, and then they're like, don't be nasty. They make like the most nasty, disgusting allegations against someone, and then they're like, well, don't be nasty about it, though. You started it. You literally are asking for this. You are asking for this. By coming out with these extraordinary, insane, absurd, nebulous, fake, bullshit, lie allegations. Okay, and then this is obviously in response to the wife's statement. So she had this to say. Most of my claims have been verified. No, there's two things that are happening here. Either Savannah Marie has blown up the claims made for the sake of her video or she's lying. It's one of the two. Either Savannah Marie is the one that pushed the groomer, sexual predator, sexual harasser narrative, or Hina is lying here. Right? Oh, Haley or something. Yes, it is the same dynamic, I think. I think there's some there's some fakery happening with some of these messages, with some of the email, maybe the email, but I can't confirm that. Savannah Marie would need to come forward and clarify that one way or another, okay? Most of your claims have not been verified, okay? From what I can ascertain, based on the video, I'm going to assume it's her that made the claims. That's all I can really do, because it's supposed to be from an email. You claimed that he was a sexual predator, a sexual harasser, a groomer, and you also, in the claim, in the thing, claimed that he, he withheld pay until you could, conducted sex acts. And you said that he's a cheater. Only one of those claims is, is agreed to be true by the wife. Okay? Maybe two if you count the alcohol aspect. But that's it. That's literally it. And that wasn't even that substantive anyway. So no, it's not true that most of your claims have been verified. No, that's not true at all. One, maybe two if we're being generous of your claims have been verified. And three or four other claims have been um, refuted by the wife and isn't backed up by your evidence. 
So this is complete and utter cope. His wife understands the power dynamic I felt. Yes, but feeling a certain way about something doesn't make it so. It's very clear that the way that you felt was null and void because there's no information or evidence to suggest those feelings were valid. And you yourself have recognized that in one of your statements where you say, you know, he never withheld pay for me. But I guess that what you're saying then is you felt like he did, but he didn't. <laughs> She admits he's an alcoholic. She agrees that it was cheating and an inappropriate workplace situation. They're going to work things out. The inappropriate workplace situation is a very small recognition of the inappropriateness of engaging. It's the kind of thing that I said where it's inadvisable to have a workplace relationship. But this would be nothing wrong if not for the cheating. Cheating is the only substantive claim of wrongdoing you can point to. And everything else has been refuted and isn't even backed up by the evidence. Okay, anyway. His wife had to find out regardless. She had the right to. He's cheating on her and is an alcoholic. Realistically, how was I supposed to even reach her? Would you accept a random friend request from a stranger you don't even know? Okay. <laughs> so we got this kind of false dichotomy now. Well, I couldn't just message her about it. So I decided to go to a YouTuber and make fake claims of sexual harassment, sexual <laughs> predation and grooming. Yeah, that was the way to do it, wasn't it? You certainly you certainly heard to get his attention. God, this person's disgusting. Especially when you know the context of how they're engaging in the conversation. This is despicable. Much less so when it's a big YouTuber, scam better at that. If you think logically, there was no way to directly reach her. His audience that supports him through everything deserve to know who their content creator is. I, no, I don't think people have got a right to know about anything beyond serious claims of crime or misconduct that need to be brought to the forefront. And now that they know they can choose to be supportive of him or keep bringing this topic up around him, your negative engagement is only making this spread further. It's only as big an issue as you make it out to be. Oh my God. This is unbelievable. You come out with an allegation. You say a guy's grooming you as an adult. He's a sexual predator and a sexual harasser. And then you blame everyone for talking about it. God, this person's despicable. Okay, I was willing to be a bit more generous towards this person just as a matter of, you know, decency. But no, this person is a disgusting human being. This is unbelievable. You came forward with allegations. You fucking shielded it on your small Twitter account and fucking blew it up. This is unreal. Nothing bad or of lasting consequence happened. This will be a small blimp in the grand scheme of things, so relax. Yeah, this person's a piece of shit as well. Cause an absolute fire... Well, in fairness, it is quite small. But then they weren't to know that this could have got a million views or something. No, no responsibility, no reflection on your own action. It's all your fault for talking about it. You're the one that came forward in the first place. That No one will be talking about this if you had done a fucking dog shit tea video wrapping up a claim of infidelity in a bunch of bullshit sexual harassment, sexual predation and grooming allegations. Anyway, Jesus Christ, man. Okay, I've tried to be calm. I'm trying to be calm. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be calm. God, it's so disgusting, man. Fortunately, a lot of the a lot of the wave has been against this and been critical of this, but it's still absolutely infuriating. I just, I just <laughs> what was it they were saying about this before it came out? The person I'm exposing. <laughs> She's so disgusting. Yeah, this is a despicable. Everyone involved in this is a total disgrace. The the two the she's a disgrace. Savannah Marie's a disgrace. Um, Pierogi isn't guilty of the more serious claims that are made, but you know, cheating on your wife is bad. Not bad enough to make it really, but nonetheless, it is bad. The only person who has got good grace 
and is actually the the kind of like best to come out of this i think is the wife i honestly i you know takes a lot for me to feel bad for someone i feel bad for his wife you know she's had to find out about this affair about this alcohol fueled discord affair publicly and is having to like try and manage the consequences and the response to this could you god it's horrible to think about what that must be like and you're having to manage the sort of kids reaction too jesus man and still has got like a very gracious reasonable response to it all what does she say in the clip oh sorry yeah i'll play it quickly Sir, how dare you question my loyalty? I've oh, been yeah, trying he's... very hard. You don't listen. I drank beer. No, you don't care. Sir. Okay, look, D don't do racism, okay? I just saw a racist comment. I don't support the racist comments. I completely disavow that, okay? Actually, unironically disavow. I mean, look, I'm not one, you know, I, I've passed it around a bit and, and said, look, this is kind of crazy if you want something to, to look over, if you need some content. But I mean, dude, it's, it's just insane. And Savannah Marie knows this. They, pri they privated and then unprivated the video. Clearly, this is, this is weighing on them. Like I say, the best thing to happen here, the best out of a bad situation would be for this video to get privated. A statement to come out saying I made a big mistake. This was never truly about the claims that I made. This was about the cheating and I should have framed it as such. There isn't evidence to back up the claims that I made. Um, I was wrong. That's the best way you can hope to salvage this. Because now you see, you see in these responses as well, right? In both... Her response and De Hina's response, who's the one that made these claims originally, they're saying, well, he admitted he cheated. <laughs> like, that seems to be the main thing that they care about. And all this other stuff was just, just you know, despicable window dressing to make it, you know, a bigger thing and make it a bigger presentation of a story. But anyway, that for now is my coverage of this latest updates on this story. I would once again say, if you want to see my original video, obviously it is my content and I'm biased, but I would strongly recommend going and giving it a watch. Um, you can kind of see the transition from me being reasonable, if critical of some of the aspects to just complete outright insane anger over how ridiculous it was. And beyond that, it's kind of funny too. The funny thing about it for me, beyond all the other terrible stuff, it's just like... Savannah Marie has essentially just gone, made a video of an hour going over two people's consensual sex messages. To the level of like going over the sex toys and oh God, it's, it's pretty wild, man. But anyway, there we go. That's all I've got to say about this for now.